Hi guys! Welcome to this edition of Youth Vibes. So, today we are going deep and personal. We'll dissect issues to do with addiction. Are you addicted to something? <laughs> What's addiction anyway? I know what you're thinking. I know what you're thinking, but hold that thought. Just hold that thought because it could be anything. It could be food, social media, pornography, anything, even your phone. So, stay tuned and follow the conversation. Let's start off with a poem from Stuart. Enjoy. Once upon a time, I was addicted to myself. So I know how it feels to be lost. I know how it feels not to know where you are. Because I've stood on stages like this and I didn't know where I was. I've started poems like this and I didn't know where I was. Where am I? I ask myself every night that I lay my head to sleep and rose again like a swinging pendulum. 20 seconds, 20 years of this mortal life, it was the melodies of heaven that kept me going. And sometimes it feels like I'm running out of answers, but he wants me right there. Because God only helps those who can't help themselves. But the world keeps screaming at us, do it, click it, feel it, drink it, smoke it, taste the feeling, it's tastefully different. How about we started asking for zero sugar? The truth is bitter. Maybe it's the words of the pastors that kept me going. There's no addicted Christian, only stubborn ones. Because it's only the Christian that has stubbornly refused to be content with the curse that separates him from his God and they can't live for the world and it's no coincidence. See, it's only when you come to the light that your shadows start to be clear. But it's only when you bring them in the light that they start to disappear. Then I had somebody say, then your God must be so evil to make it in a way that can't be fixed. Oh, but look at the cross. When I survey the wondrous cross and see absolutely no way for humanity to be saved, then we all doomed. We all headed head first straight into destruction. And if God is real and he did give the cross, then he will be just in meeting out our punishment. The boundless stores of God's grace. So I like to ask, as a Christian, if I've crossed the line, where does that put the line? everyone and you're welcome to another edition of the Youth Vibes. We are dealing with addictions, we are talking addictions and um, to help us do that we have a counsellor, a teacher, a mother, an auntie and a friend to the Youth and Students Ministry at St. Francis. You probably know her but I will allow her to introduce herself some more. Welcome Auntie Sarah Yamukama. Yes. Say thank, some more. Thank you. Yes. Uh -huh. What do you do? Who, 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 who are you? to the other people who don't know you, but for us, we, we know you. <laughs> I'm Sarah Mirembe Biamkama. I'm a um, teacher. My subjects are secondary school of biology and chemistry. Mm. I've tried to run away from it, but I still go back to it somehow. Right. I'm a counselor. I'm a member of St. Francis Chapel. For me, that is important. Yes. I've been at this chapel from when I joined as a university student wow. in 19... 93, yes. yes. Okay. I had to make that point. Archives. Yes. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> but um, I'm, I'm a member of Marriage Fellowship, Mother's Union. I am married to Engineer Sambia Mkama. Right. Uh, a person of integrity, a very straight man who makes my life quite easy. Um, we, God has blessed us with four children. Oh, wow. hmm. I've literally seen them grow from babyhood. I'm seeing two of them turning into adults wow. very fast. Wow. Yeah, three girls and a boy. But really, I'm a member of this church. I think that's what I enjoy most. Yes. Seeing people come here the way we came, mm. see them grow, get married, get jobs, good jobs, yes. excel, right. see their gifts, you know, them flourishing in their gifts. Mm. So I, I, re I think I'm very happy to be a member of St. Francis Chapel. Wonderful. Yeah. Right, into the main topic now, addictions. What are addictions, Auntie Sarah? Because we are in that space where sometimes we say ad addicted to hide away from our sins, you know. 
so what what is it what is addiction how can you begin that conversation yeah um addictions are psychological physiological complexes yeah which manifest in any behavior that a person finds relief in mm-hmm. you will therefore de- crave for something in the short term but unfortunately you suffer negative consequences right. as a result of this thing you're doing mm-hmm. you're doing it really it's a manifestation addictions are manifestations implying right. they are not the real problem there is the issue inside and there's something else inside. thank you so it's right. manifesting like this right and and i think we dwell a lot on uh, manifestation and, and this is why we we, we prefer yeah. to describe it some of us want to call it sin and others mm-hmm. prefer to call it it's a psychological thing yes. whatever it is it's just a manifestation it's of a, a deeper have, yeah. thing right yeah right um right so how how do we um i'm thinking how, how how do we know that we are addicted when does one tell is there a a line you can draw and say at this point now I'm, i i i know i'm addicted or do we even know or it's just subconscious what, what do you think about that? where we are going i think we will yeah. be able to know everybody even me i <laughs> should be able to know yeah. that by the way am i also struggling with an addiction somewhere but first i would like to uh, quote the american uh, the definition of addiction by the american society of addiction medicine they right. say addiction is a primary brain disorder that arises in the brain largely due to genetic reasons wow. I'm sorry this is not true. A yes, genetic, the Americans, yes. we should be looking at them as superior, but it's not true. When you look at it like this, then we should all be seeing psychiatrists because of our genes. Because then there's a, 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 a this a, complicated yeah. science brain thing. Right. And, and and but that's not right. That's not right. Then another wrong thing is that we think people who are addicted actually have chosen. We think it's a choice. Mm-hmm. Then it's, it's not true. It's, we are, it's not a choice. And because we think it's a choice, that's why the law treats addicts, you know, by saying, since you chose this, let's mm-hmm. punish you. Let's put you in rehab. Let's put you on medicine. Mm-hmm. No. Really, addiction, and, and just before I move on, I want to quote a scripture. Mm-hmm. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23 says, Above all else, guard your heart. Mm-hmm. for it is the well spring of life. life. So I'm going to try and describe well spring of life from other uh, versions of the Bible. Right. Other Bibles say it is for everything you do flows from, from it. Yeah. The Bible is telling me and you to guard our hearts because everything we do flows from the heart. Right. Another version says for out of it are the issues of life. Mm-hmm. And another version says for it determines the course of your life. So you find me as Sarah. By the way, let me remove this. Addictions are not it's not only young people prone to addictions. Right. Your entire life cycle you're prone to addictions. Mm-hmm. You're prone to addictions when you're a young child with your parents. You're prone to addiction when you go to boarding school, you're prone to addiction when you're in VAC. Right. You're prone to addiction when you're at university. You're prone to addiction when you're a wife. I can get addicted to anything now. So it is not a some group things that group suffers with is that it no yes, yes. and because we 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 as we feel self categorizing certain people are suffering addictions more most probably the people manifesting those particular manifestations which we are we want to shy away from yes the oh, big addiction struggling with alcohol sarah yeah. you are addicted right. struggling with cigarette you must be addicted let's talk about the sweet tooth like yes. me cake and chocolate. cake Yeah. And you know how we cover it up we say you know when I'm stressed hmm? I I take some sugar yeah. No I eat cake I love cake when I'm stressed so I put on a lot of weight That's the weight and are looking for the cakes and the sweet things and the chocolate I'm addicted you you eat a chocolate it's not enough another few minutes you you're, you're checking in people's pockets bags and yeah, we even sweet. know those who have sweets yeah. we know those who have chocolate we know those who have good cake I'm saying that because it's an area where I struggle. Wow. And the moment I begin to see myself looking for cakes I'm like Sarah some internal temperature is faulty. Mm-hmm. What is wrong? What have I lost? Right. 
So that's the internal temperature. That's where I want us to go. That that once you, you're able to gauge your internal temperature, then we'll be able to know that. By the way, I'm sliding down the, the wrong road. addiction path. Yeah. And by the way, when you're recovering, like for me, when I have my life together. I can actually do without cakes. A whole week goes and I haven't looked for chocolate, I haven't looked for cakes, mm -hmm. and I'm able to control my weight. Right. You know? Right. Okay. Sweet tooth. Today, Sweet tooth. I hope you don't feel attacked, but um. check your internal <laughs> well, yes. temperature. Yes. Yeah. So at some point in our discussion, we mm -hmm. will each be able to know, by the way, am I free of addiction completely? Mm. Or am I just that I'm manifesting in the other one's way? Which for us looks like it's so bad, right, right. but probably I'm also addicted. So when once you you take your own temperature, you're able to restabilize until that your yeah, internal. I'm going, I'm going off yeah. this, and for me, I go off by betting. I don't do cigarette, right. or I get off by doing pornography. And don't do shopping, and I don't do shopping. Right, you know. But but now when people are shopping, it's not easy to come to fellowship and pass saying, but that sister is struggling with shopping. But actually, I do it. I look for the money. I call relatives. I lie. I create trips, my books. So they send me money. I go shopping. Then I come to my room with big bugs. And yeah, shoes. Chuck, I'm just feeding my addiction. addiction. Wow. Let, let's, uh, <laughs> let, I know let, it's funny. Let's, 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 let's talk about... Um, the factors that, that get us into ad, ad, ad addictions um, are Good. there. Since they are not, like you've, you've just said, that they are a sign of something deeper. So what, what, what are those things that are deeper that we don't know about, that we may just be creating the, the habit and yet avoiding what, you know, let us into the habit? What's that? How, how can we identify those two? I mean, those four factors. Um, let me borrow from my biology. Right. We have needs. Let me use an obvious one. Mm. If I ask you to close your nose and mouth for five minutes as a real experiment, scientists will do experiments, you can't keep them closed even for 60 seconds. Wow. And when you open them, you'll be like gasping, gasping for, for air. Yes. So that tells you that that's a need. A need is that thing we need for survival. Right. Now, apart from oxygen, apart from food, we can't do without food. We need it. And all of us, apart from those basic needs which we all know, we have certain two important needs as human beings. Right. Number one is we have a need for attachment. Mm -hmm. Now, I want you to take the need for attachment as serious as the breathing in and breathing out. I want you to take it at that level. Right. That I have a desire, me, I, you and I have a desire to connect with somebody so that we are able to take care of that person or that person takes care of us. It's easy to understand when you consider a baby. Months, when we, get to, when we leave hospital, the neck is falling, the, the baby can't even pull a bed sheet to get warmth. Yeah. So they literally depend on us. When they saw themselves, so as I come as a mother and I'm changing the pamper and I'm feeding and I'm, you know, covering that attachment is working for the baby to protect the baby, but in a way, I am being ministered to. I am deriving attach my attachment needs are being met in the baby. as I care for, for that baby. baby. Yes. My attachment needs are also being, being cared for. Right. So that's why when we come to fellowship as young people, as even as us as adults, we love I love Mother's Union so right. much. In Mother's Union, we have such a deep relationship, Mother's Marriage Fellowship. But why attachment? That's when one need. of us is in a problem, we all come up. Right. But also when you're on challenge, they also do what? Run to you to help, to help us survive. So that's, if we understand attachment, then the other second need is um, authenticity. Mm -hmm. That at any single time, I should have the ability to tell how I feel. Dennis, how do you feel right now? Well, I'm there. <laughs> I'm hungry. <laughs> You're hungry. I'm glad yeah. you can at least pick up something. You're like, I'm hungry. Yes. What does hunger do to you, uh, Dennis? You you get out of your mood. You, get, thank you. you. you become, now you're becoming you, conscious yes. of yourself. Grumpiness. So when somebody comes for some report and it's not ready when you're hungry, will they get the best of you, the worst of you? Probably the worst. Thank you. So we need to be, even the person coming for the report should be able to quickly say, by the way, this is not the real Dennis. Yes. 
I think I found him not fine. Otherwise, this is not his natural response, common response. Mm. But but we are we. What we do is I try not to experience what I am feeling. I cover up. Look at me. I'm a third year student, and I've come to university, and 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 I don't have rent. My tuition is not yet paid. It's one week to exams. I don't have money for food. I sent my mom a message to send me some money, and she said, "Mwana wange." Mm. Hmm? I don't even have 10K. Yeah. But then I'm coming to fellowship in the evening. Should I write those things on my face? No. What do I do? I put on makeup. I put on a nice cloth. I yeah. put on a nice shoe. I come. Oh, we are together again. Praising the Lord. Yeah, so, I, I mean, that I sail in that mode. But the moment I'm out of the gate and I'm heading to my residence, my pain floods me. So my my inability to be able to accept who I am at all times and face it is lack of authenticity. Right. Otherwise, I should be able to come and tell you, by the way, Dennis, I am a bit low today, by the way, and these are the challenges. The rent is not paid. This is, And probably we say a quick prayer, but also maybe that day you have an extra 2,000. Do you know that that 2,000 can buy me commando, actually? Right. And I'll sleep when I have a meal. As we wait for our mommy to take her loan from her sack, I don't know. Mm. But authenticity, many times, and attachment mm. are in conflict. Right. Can I give an example? Go ahead, please. Think about a little child who is denied a cookie before bed. Because the teeth yeah. are going to get sugar. As a yeah. mother, in my brain, I'm saying, no, she won't have the cookie. Her teeth will remain with particles and, and we'll have tooth decay. Yeah. Now, when I deny the little girl the cookie, she goes to bed. No, she gets angry. Mm. That she didn't meet that need. Yes. Now, her. in her spike of anger, mm -hmm. she's faced with a challenge. She's looking at mommy. And she's so angry. So when she reacts angrily, I, tell, I also cut a wire. Yes. Why? I am like, Madam, and when I mother. say no, yes. you should accept my no. And my no. Yes. Remember, Mami Zan who buys all the nice things. Mami Zan who covers you in bed. She's Zan who takes you to church. As in, she's really been there for you. You can tell that your mother has been taking care of you. So you have attachment. Right. But now you're being denied to express your authenticity. Because when you expressed it, what message came out? Mommy, mommy showed you. Mommy said, "Good children don't get angry. don't get angry." Yeah. What did I hear when she said, "Good children don't get angry"? I said, "Angry children are not loved." Oh, wow. So my 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 need for attachment is threatened temporarily. So I'm like, ah ah. ah. So, so when I'm angry, I want to be loved. Eh? So my attachment need is going to be taken away from me. You know what? I'm going to suppress authenticity. Mm. I'm angry inside. I'm going to cover up. So that I remain with mommy's love. Yeah. We have done this over and over and over. We do it. I am prone to doing it now. Mm. If I brought out an, an emotion at my age and my husband... He's like, yeah, because of that. How can you get angry because of that? So I'm like, so it was wrong. When I when I get angry, I want to be loved. Mm. My attachment with my husband. Remember, I'm at home. Now I'm with my husband. This is my new home. Yeah. So he's the one I'm attached to and our kids. Now, if I get angry, my husband's love might come. Yes, I go down. Now, I think I'm safer if I hide my feelings mm -hmm. so that Munange attachment remains. Right. So I'm doing it subconsciously. But I'm predisposing myself to addiction. Right. Because in, in, in this suppression of the anger, you, you might end up in something else. In being unauthentic. Because yes. authenticity is facing your real self inside. Mm. In trying to say, how? Oh, not sure the world that I'm um, angry because they might not love me. So it will affect my attachment. So you sacrifice authenticity mm -hmm. for attachment. Right. So all of us at some point have either sacrificed attachment for authenticity or we've yeah, sacrificed yeah, yeah. authenticity for attachment. Wow. That is what predisposes all of us to addiction. And let me mention that mm -hmm. we are not only addicted to the opiates. For us, we think about marijuana. I've never done marijuana, Sarah, myself. I've never done cocaine. Mm. But do you know how much... 
I get lost in shopping. Mm-hmm. Internet. Yes, what now I'm catching myself yeah. in my ways. And because, and we say these, these are expressions right. that my internal system has been disorganized. Mm-hmm. Sweet things. Everybody who calls themselves a sweet tooth. Ask yourself. We are. Right. Why? It's dangerous. We said an addiction, you do it and you keep getting quick fixes. Yeah. In, eh? And unfortunately, it destroys you in the long run. You will ask, how does, how does the sugar destroy me? Mm-hmm. When I was getting married, my, my, my doctor took our, our tests and asked us our medical histories in the family. When she discovered that my daddy died of a stroke, she warned my husband that these kind of women whose fathers die of strokes, they usually will die of a stroke. So, sir, put away everything in her path, including contraceptives, because by 40 she will be hypertensive. My husband obeyed. He's very particular. He will tell you, sir, right, those, are, those foods are not good for your health. This is not right. If we gave up contraceptives, I mean, what can't you manage? I reached 40, mm-hmm. and I wasn't hypertensive. I am 47. Even my siblings don't believe it, because even my young siblings, all of them have hypertension. Wow. Why? Because you try and steer clear. Now, see me with a history as bad as that, mm-hmm. with a, a predicament like that from a doctor, taking a lot of cakes, chocolate, yeah. sweet candy, and they're everywhere. And I see them. So you carry into your bag, into your bag. I am grateful to God that he has helped me fight that addiction. In that bag, there is no single sweet. Mm. But I would buy them. You know, even, even buy these ones you can put in the mouth in class. Right. When I was doing SCC, I would have so much candy. Then what would happen? The, the way increase and increase and increase. You are seeing the outside increment, but also the blood vessels are getting clogged. Yes. Yeah. I had all my babies. My pressure didn't shoot up once. Mm-hmm. So if I, if I hadn't checked my addiction and went and dealt with my internal environment, I would still be struggling in that area. I'm a, I come from a very big family. We, we, we actually be big. My dad at some point was really a giant. Right. I see it manifesting in my kids. My 12-year-old is bigger than most campuses, I know. And, and by we try to make sure that dad is really no more African dad. But she has manifested the gigantic genes. So right. now I have to keep talking to her. Sweetheart, sweets are not yours. If it's addictive, then let's deal with that at the cause of the addiction. Right. So that, it can come to you at any time mm-hmm. as long as your attachment and authenticity are battling. Right. So the moment for you, you see yours coming in. Maybe yours is shopping, mm-hmm. internet. Why are we online at 3 a.m.? Well, there are some, some funny videos we need to, to check out on. And, uh, <laughs> Why don't you give yourself a time frame? Right. I do internet for two hours right. a day. Right. And you can. Yes. But because you must to satisfy your addiction, mm. you go. Why? Do you know that I can be in fellowship and I'm gambling and I am always in all the betting stores? Are you aware that I could be in this fellowship and I'm gambling? Well, I, th- I think there's this like a cat- categorization of there are sins which are really big, like big addictions, <laughs> weed, you know. Then now betting. I'm is, so sorry. You know? <laughs> then you yeah. never amused me. Yes. Uh, yeah. Th- 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 I mean, just, just, same. just speaking to those categories, because we, ha- we have like c- c- categories, so, so like sex, and, um, alcohol, drugs, bad addictions. However, there are um, some good addictions. Yes, like praying, fasting, um, you know, none. Overt ones, like non obvious ones. Yes, just just think about those categories. Dennis, how many marriages are dying because the woman has to be in prayer all the time? Oh, well. Because a woman has to be in fellowship, or a man. Yes. How many marriages are struggling because somebody has to be on their computer working, workaholics? Mm. So the way the one, what somebody is destroyed by sex, is the same way you're going to be destroyed by work, even. Yes. Ministry. Work has its place. When do you sleep? Let me read the definition again yeah. to really bring the point down. We said it is any behavior that a person finds relief in, therefore craves 
in the short term, but suffers negative consequences in the long term and doesn't give up despite the negative consequences. That even when my husband is complaining about my being at church too much, and it is straining our relationship. Mm -hmm. I don't even get the ability to say, nice, Sarah, stop it. Yeah, you've got to. I even just try it. I even get angry. Yes. Hey, I even report me. him to Uncle Oni. Keeping me from serving hey, so God. He's, he's stopping me <laughs> from serving God. But yes. actually, I, I just have to work on my internal self. Yes. Where is my attachment need being met? Mm -hmm. And is my, am I authentic? Let me even talk more about authenticity. When we're doing counseling down there at uh, Institute of Psychology, yeah. our lecturers used to emphasize that the actually in counseling we call it congruence. Mm -hmm. and they'll tell us, don't go to counsel if you're not congruent. If I come to you, what I give off should tally with what is inside. It is wrong for me to come and fake something on the outside and on the inside. I'm very far from it. Right. You try it in counseling, you will fail. Let me give an obvious thing. If I'm struggling as a counselor, as a woman counselor, and I'm struggling with an addiction to sex, mm. usually in a counseling session, you're two. You and a client. Right. Now, before a male client and a male client is struggling with sex addiction. Yes you will break the boundaries of professionality yeah. Yeah. before you know it that two of you will be in a sexual relationship. Right. Now, he came to get help because his wife is leaving. Before he gets the help, among the ladies, a younger deco cancer. Has he been helped? No, he hasn't. Right. So... And, and actually, during your counseling training, one of the things that has to happen to you is you have to go through your own counseling. You have to deal with your own baggage mm -hmm. for you to get st stable enough. If you struggle with money, now I'm talking about the congruence as a counselor, and then you're trying to help people to manage their finances. You're stealing. Yes. How do you help people who are, who are struggling with stealing? You can't. Mm. Mm. You can't. So me, I would like to encourage us, even myself, right. that Sarah, keep those relationships whereby you're caring for others to help them survive and you're receiving care from others to help you survive. Mm -hmm. Work on that one regularly and also be as authentic as you can be. Have room to express yourself. Mm -hmm. I would like to be in fellowship with a person. And I know what they are struggling with. Why? For me, it helps me. Mm -hmm. In that I know that this time, if I'm strong, I am the support. I am the cover. I can even take a day and fast for what they are struggling for because I know. But this coming to fellowship and we're giving the impression, oh, oh hallelujah, you know, it is yes. all well. Yes. So who is, who is helping people stand? Right. At all, you're all giving us the impression you're okay today and tomorrow and the other day. Meanwhile, you're falling every day, all of you. Yeah? You are not even supporting each other appropriately. Right. Bring it out. Bring it out. And even us, if they bring it out to us, if our friends bring it out to us, support. Mm. Yeah. Look for all the literature. Walk the journey with them. That, 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 that's, that's Walk the, the journey answer, with because them. Because there is another possibility of the fear of me sharing my issue in the fellowship because they are going to talk about me behind my back in different circles that I don't know of. I like so, that example. So we keep back and, and, and think, well, if I just keep back, maybe God will come in my own private life and save me from there than me sharing it from here in the, the fellowship. Yeah. It will be good if God comes to you before the addiction destroys you. Mm -hmm. But also them who are able to talk. Guess what? They are also struggling. Right. If you find that as a Christian, you delight in exposing mm. other people's weaknesses, you then your really internal mean. weakness is like times 10 theirs. Right. Because if you can't keep your mouth shut, you're also struggling. I see. But you are. Right, right. And, and actually, I should also be able to say that, by the way, I think this rumor mongering is actually destroying me. I should even watch my tongue. Mm -hmm. If I can't protect this sister who came and said she's struggling and work with her until she gets full recovery, then I also have a problem. Mm -hmm. 
But that's, that makes us fake Christians. Mm. Now, mm. Fake, Christi- fake Christians don't bring healing in the community. Yeah. We don't. And that's why people will struggle for three years with the same addiction. No because love nobody love. is authentically supporting them. Yeah. It's okay. And by the way, if I, uh, if, I te- if I tell you that I catch myself online at 3 a.m., for me, it's a very good signal something is wrong. I'm mm-hmm. married. What am I doing at 3 a.m. on the phone? Mm-hmm. Where should I be if my husband is home? Yeah. I should be in bed. There must be a barrier between and him, between him and I that is taking away my, my fulfillment for, for attachment. attachment yeah. So I'm looking for how to feel it. Even the man, he should be able to say, where is the person I'm supposed to be cuddling right yeah. now? And should be able to get out of bed and look for me. And lovingly, he should be able to pick me up nicely and take me back to bed. Mm. Oh, what, are you, what are you doing online? Now, I'm talking about, okay, young people will tell me, from me, I'm single, I'm alone. You are getting addicted. There is nobody who you're going to get married to who put up with that behavior. Yeah, on the phone. You'll be in the, you'll be in the counseling room it's soon after your wedding. At a honeymoon, you'll be on the phone. But this yeah. is what's happening. Yeah. People complain. People take each other out for debts. Mm-hmm. Do you know and, where they are? And they're on the phone. Yeah. And you tell me that one is not addicted. You took out a beautiful lady. Mm-hmm. My God. Can you enjoy the few moments you have with her? The physical, the, t- the tea? Mm-hmm. Can you now notice the beautiful eyebrows? All right. You know, you girl, can you, can, you're on the phone. Mm. Choka, you're supposed to be listening to this man's great ideas. Kati, how will you listen to his great ideas you're when on you're on Facebook? Yeah. For the two hours, you're out together. Actually, I don't know how you people connect. Well, well, but uh, many of you, your <laughs> need for attachment yeah. is not being ne- met. Yeah. Develop it, make it deep, yeah. make it sweet, make it nice, so that when you come here and make your vows, eh? You Mm. are attached, you too. Now, in the absence of that, because when you jump from your WhatsApp and whatever, the next thing is kissing and probably the sex, which is also an addiction. An addiction. Another addiction. So then you wonder, why why doesn't it feel great after? Because there's no attachment before. Then you say, I think the problem is that this girl or this boy, so the girl also goes and tries elsewhere. Also, the boy boy goes and tries elsewhere. Then we get into the confusion of, I think I'm not attracted to these opposite sex people. I think, for me, mm. since I'm not getting the happiness this way, I think let me try same sex. Same sex. Yeah. Guess what? It gets emptier. Right. Then you're confused. Mm-hmm. Then the manifestations of more and more addictions. Then Uncle Oni mentioned yesterday at our, our, our Mother's, oh, Mother's Union meeting yeah, yeah. that one of these days, I'm going to start coming into your homes and inspect your fridges. Some Christians are beginning to struggle with alcohol. I was sitting on a table. I laughed. For yes. me, I laughed. Yes. I was like, How by the time alcohol makes it way into our fridges, something is wrong. Yeah. Where is our attachment? Yes. Where is our authenticity? Yes. Sarah, we are coming. And I, I, I now begin ha- having alcohol in my fridge. Well, it's a little red wine for your stomach. Sometimes you have uh, an upset and things like, like that, and you need to take some wine and, and things. That's cosmetic. That's yeah. why we get lipstick. You know, I love makeup. Mm. But makeup conceals. A lot of The best the, makeup yeah. artist will tell you there will be no blemish. And they do. They're able to do it. Mm-hmm. But soon after, when you reach your honeymoon venue, you have to, to, wash, your face. to wash it off. Pity this young man yes, we see. for the first time he's with you in private and you have washed off your wow. makeup. Your makeup is gone. Hey. Yes. Now, now our young people are struggling. Well, well uh, <laughs> keep praying for us and Sarah. By the way, I personally pray because yes. eh, I'm like, mm, yes. some of these things have to come down. So that's the same way of deceiving you that Yes. The doctor said I need some red wine. That's, that's, cosmetic. Some red, that's red wine. cosmetic. There's like a deeper issue that you're dealing with more than just the stomach. There's a upset. deeper issue. Either mm-hmm. my kids and I are not connecting mm-hmm. at all mm-hmm. and it's happening mm-hmm. or I'm not connecting with my husband mm-hmm. and I encourage young people, keep all your relations alive. 
keep all your relations alive. Everybody God brings in your life. Just sit down with them. Some 30 minutes of chatting with a sensible person who cares for you, who loves you. Let me tell you. Right. You'll go feeling good. Mm. I feel like in our church we are highly disconnected from the young people and it hurts me. For me, I've discovered that every young person I sit down with for an hour and I get to know what they are going through. And we pray. In the next 12 months, like all those things fall in place. Wow. If it was work related, they get jobs. If it was relationships are not working out, they settle. Before that 12 months elapses, they've even married. Wow. Actually, these days I fear for myself. I'm like, oh, is it normal? I mean, yes, yes. And, and, but it's hard. Oh, we have many adults who are not doing any ministry mm. to the young people here. Mm. If they are busy, stop him before he enters his car. Yeah. And tell him, I need, at, I need 30 minutes of your time. He, these people will give you appointments. Even if he tells you, come to my office, go. Mm-hmm. Go and talk to him. Everything you're struggling with, somebody else has struggled with. Right. When I talk about the sweet tooth, I can name 30 people. Who I know in their life, when they are stressed, they will look for sweet things. Mm-hmm. So somebody has struggled with, don't even fear sex. Sometimes you're like, hmm, these men who are very dressed smartly in their suits, eh? I am a young man. If I go to him and tell him I'm struggling here, he will not even understand. Who tells you? They, they, you uh, go and have a chat with him. Yeah. Over head of lady, over who, over... These yeah. people here, you're, you're at a privileged church. You have everybody you need. Right. That man will help you and he will open up to you and say, oh, 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 I struggled there. Now, when he opens him out, his mouth to give you wisdom, how he was able to overcome it, it's worth it. It will make a lot of sense. The same man will support you. When he sees you begin to walk the journey, he will support you. Mm-hmm. And when you're out of it, he will actually look at you like his own son because he mentored you. Mm-hmm. And the same applies to the ladies. Don't fall for the first you see smart, they've come in with their passes and they are quiet and their hands are closed. You say, okay, they're mulling. I'll wait for them when they're getting into the car. Yeah. But even on a personal level, check your need for connection. Mm. Who are your deep relationships, genuine relationships? Work on them. If they are dead, talk to another adult. How can I mend my relationships at home? I don't connect with my mother. I don't connect with my aunties. I feel like I've been abandoned to campus alone. Mm. They will guide you. Mm. They will guide you. Look for counselor. Look for a sensible counselor. But work on your internal needs. Authenticity and attachment are key. Because sometimes we're in this circle where we we, we are saying... um, I, th- I think it's a common issue among us boys that we think we can actually handle. I mean, this is the thing we can we can do do this thing. There is a, there is no one who needs to know. I, I I I find that the females are a bit more expressive and they can come and cry out to somebody else, but the males are a, a bit you know you know pulled back. Let us handle this thing as guys. You know, um, what 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 what, what would you advise in such situations, and sir? Um, yeah. In that sense. Don't believe the face you see. Mm. It's only the face of my pride. Mm. I'm not made of steel. Yeah. I'm not made of stone. Who sang that song? Um, I'm still young. I'm sorry. It must have been an old song. <laughs> mm-hmm. Those timeless songs yeah. cut through generations. Right. Michael Bolton. You say now she's Christian, how does she listen to that music? There is music that cuts through. Mm. You think I can carry the world on my shoulder on my shoulders? No, I can't. I'm not made of steel. I'm not made of stone. And seeing him seeing that, Michael Bolton seeing that with his, you know, there are people who are really musical. Right. He would bring it out so well. And I was a bit young, I think I probably was maybe post campus. Mm. But I paid attention to the song and it broke down certain walls in me. Dennis, mm. don't believe the walls you see the men put up. Men are real. Mm. Maybe men are more real than women. Hey. I've, been, I've been unfortunate. I get more positive results quickly from young men wow. 
than from ladies. The ladies take long to face their internal self. Mm. Authenticity, the men reach authenticity faster. They're able to tell you, by the way, I'm sorry, I'm completely off now, let me tell you. But the girl, she will did it, and he'll go around, go around. By the time she gets to actually say, ha, chili booby. Now the guy has moved on. So don't believe the face you see. Yeah. What men don't like is they will not express themselves in public. Mm. But when they find a trusted person, mm. they will express themselves. So look for that trusted person. Even Jesus had certain three. Let's yes. name them. Yes, Peter, James, and John. Yes. yes. But you people, he was good. Why did he need the three? Wow. Who is your Peter, James, and John? Uh, let me think about it. <laughs> and tell that to all the other young men right. but also the young ladies right. okay right. yes now we like calling it Martha Elizabeth and who find them yeah. but the men quickly will know what is wrong internally mm. they quickly get authentic mm. Mm. quickly and I'm encouraging the ladies also to get let me talk about shopping because this one is our problem I have an essay then shortly, I want an S9 and an S10. Then yes. before it, I want a Note 20. Mm. Do you know how I get those phones? Do you know what I go through to get those phones? Do you know how many calls I make and how many lies I make? Because mfa I'm dying to get, to get, to get. Yeah. Sister, even when that, that's why the S10 didn't satisfy you. That's why you're looking for a Note 20. Wow. Then Simanya, you also have to hold a certain apple. Even we have a lot of CEOs here. Yeah. They are still holding J3s. Well, uh, they are CEOs. Mm -hmm. One, no. This church has people. <laughs> My dear, when they bring out their portfolios, they're like, okay, you're their friend. But you're like, mm, okay, mm -hmm. I accept. Yeah. But again, I'll just smartphone you. J3 Pro. Of course, guys can need because it's always in her car and in her, on her desk in office. Yeah. And it's still functioning. So she tells us, I say, but why not check it yeah. Even my so, ten year old, yeah. my eight year old knows them. Uh, Twelve, 12 max pro, I think. Have you? Yeah. Why? Because I have a ka challenge. Mm, something new, something yes, newer is better. Yes. Yeah. And and I'm serious. It's not only heroin we should be afraid of. It's not only marijuana. It's not only the people injecting themselves. I worked among injectables for a week. Mm. Those people call themselves bad blood. And to theirs is, is obvious. The needle comes from the other one. Uh, and a blood. Uh, yeah, that's what makes them brothers. Oh, By the way, that's why they will be in a group. They are not only interested in the, in the drug. They are brothers. Blood, brother, but blood. Right. Eh? For what? To meet the need of attachment. Right. When they are there, they will close their doors. That there's a person at the gate. Not everybody is allowed in. We don't want to be judged by the others. They know they have a weakness, but they don't want to face it. Mm -hmm. So the addiction stays. That's why I want them to be in the normal community. Wow. So that when they are with you, they're like, but Sarah, how come for you you're not struggling with this? And you're like, oh, you're struggling with that. Let's pray. Let's pray. Then I will help you to get out of the things that always take you there. Then I should get down to help you and find out, but why is this person struggling with this addiction? Mm. And once I'm able to realize that they have no deep relations with anybody, I should guide them on how to reconnect with all their relationships because they need them. I am an extra, but by Najibava. Let me give a few examples of families in Kampala. There are people who come to Kampala. They will bring all their siblings to this church marry from this church and other Christians. But those people, if you follow their lifestyles at church, they are always together as families, even for at least once or twice a month. Mm. At first, I used not to understand it. I used to say, hmm, this is, some families are funny. Eh? Do you really have to yes. always or be with your siblings and their spouses yeah. and their babies and their birthdays and their what? My dear, I take it serious now. Yeah. I take it so seriously. Those are people who will pop up at home because one of the nieces is doing P7 tomorrow. They just find themselves converging in the home. Then they're like, now was it, now was it. Our brother was shocked recently. His daughter was doing PLA. Mm -hmm. And for some reason, we all found ourselves in his house at about 8 p.m. 
He said, even you, Sarah, you have a kid in prison. And I said, yes, but I wanted to come and pray for my niece. Wow. When that girl saw me, mm. she hugged me like for two minutes. I have never seen it. It was like she was going through a traumatizing event. And one of her aunties had entered. She held me even. Her dad looked and said, eh, eh, Diana, this is not your wedding day. <laughs> Can you two attach to your aunt? Yes, yes. I told him that's why I came. Right. To support my child. And we prayed for her. And straight, I went back to my home, also to my candidate. Mm. So, feel your needs for attachment. And be as authentic as possible. All addictions will run out. If somebody shares an addiction in the fellowship, bring them close. Mm. Help them work on those two areas. Pray with them. Keep checking on them. But mm. when was the last time you talked to your siblings? When was the last time you talked to your mom? I don't like talking to them. I'm angry with them. Okay, can we deal with the anger? Yeah. Before you know it, a person who was taking three packs of cigarettes might go down to two to one. Mm. And at some point, you'll actually find they have a, a pack there and they're not even taking it. You will have done a good job wow. in their lives. Wow. Anyway, I feel like I feel like we've said too well, much. Well, friends, we are we are out of time, but um, <laughs> we are going to continue this conversation next time, and uh, we are we'll be discussing with the Aunt Sarah the road to recovery and what that yeah. looks like uh, yeah. in the next episode, in the next uh, edition of the Youth Vibes. But please do stay in touch, and um, I'll see you next time. God bless you. <sighs> I hope that was an informative session. Well, let's keep the conversation going in the comment section. Hit that like button, subscribe. Remember to share with a friend. See you guys next time.